Good to see you. All right. Who is that with all the money? That's Piper. <laughs> Way to go. Good job. Keep it going. Page 269. Since Jesus came in. All right, here we go. Daryl's first. Good day today. Thank you, Lord. Are you thankful? Oh, yeah. Page 269, gentlemen. Ready? Did they got it? All right, here we go. today about being thankful and I'm glad I'm part of this fine family right here. Love each one of you. Sing this song while the ushers come and we're going to come for this evening's tithes and offerings. And once again, you check yourself and say, Has, have I, am I blessed? Am I overly blessed? Am I exceptionally blessed? Or maybe you're not blessed. <laughs> Sing this old song. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joined in with Jesus as we travel the sun. For I'm part of the family, the 
Timmy here, Timmy Aldridge. All right, pray for us, Timmy. It's good to, I've, he was walking across, and you know how my sight is, and I asked Patty, is that Timmy? I don't know. He's pretty good size. <laughs> pray for us, Timmy, if you can pray after that. All right, Lord, I thank you for uh, tonight. Thank you for the time for us to be here. Uh, thank you for this week of uh, Thanksgiving, uh, being with my family, seeing all my friends. Uh, bless this uh, offering to your service. In your name I pray, amen. sing for us. Appreciate them. They're going to come and sing some songs. Let's give them a hand as they come.
day I went back to the place where I used to go Today I saw the same old crowd I knew before When they asked me what had happened I try to tell them Thanks to Calvary I don't come here anymore Thanks to Calvary I am not the man that I used to be I try to tell them Thanks to Calvary We don't come anymore Then I went back To the house Where we used to live My little girl Oh, little girl, don't be afraid because you got a brand new daddy. Thanks to Calvary, we don't live here anymore. Thanks to Calvary, I am not the dad that I used to be. I try to tell her Thanks to Calvary We don't live here anymore His heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, so now I'm clean. The cross he carried bore my burdens. The nails that held him set me free. His life for mine, his life for mine. How could it ever be that he would die? God's son would die to save. Suffering 
for my healing. He spilled his blood to fill my soul. His crown of thorns made me royalty. His sorrow gave me joy untold. His life for mine. His life for mine. How could it ever be that he would die? God's son would die. Save a wretch like me. One love divine, he gave his life for mine. He was despised and rejected, stripped of his garments and oppressed. I am loved. On the day you were saved, you jump up and throw your hands in the air and say, Praise the Lord. Maybe two of you. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. And it must have been the hand. What about a Monday? It must have been the pain. 
It's a, it's a joy to be on the stage when that song is being sung and actually see both of my daughters, two of my daughters stand up, my wife stand up, and to know that my family is saved. And we got one more to go, and we're working on that one too. And I, I have the utmost faith that she'll be there soon. I was thinking it didn't take long, Tim, for you to be back to get called out, buddy. You get, you get called out around here. Uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, please turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 13. I want to quickly say a quick thank you to the ladies who prepared uh, the evening for pastor's appreciation and actually included me. I did not expect to be included. I'm not a pastor. I'm not on staff here. And the appreciation and the accolades need to go to those four gentlemen. But I was made to be included, and I am thankful for that and thankful to so many of you who gave me cards and gifts, and it did not go unnoticed. I appreciate it very much, making me feel like I'm part of the team. If you'll stand with me, I'm going to read from 2 Kings chapter 2. We're going to read verses 11 through 13. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw them no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And this is the verse I want to focus on tonight. He took up also the mantle of Elijah, Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. If God would help me tonight, I'd like to preach, Why pick up the mantle? Let's pray. Dear Lord, I love you, and I thank you for the blessings, God, that you give us here in this church. I thank you for uh, my family, God, and the fact that all of my family is saved. Lord, what more could a man want than for his family to be saved? And Lord, my desire tonight is to please you, God, to bring honor to your name. Uh, I'm thankful also, like has been said before, for this week, God, for the country we were born in, for the families we have, for the friends we have, for this church, God. But I'm thankful most and foremost, God, for salvation, what you did for me at Calvary, God. If you'll just be with me for just a few moments tonight, God, I promise to give you the glory for anything that's said and done here tonight. In your name, amen. amen. I, how many of you were here Wednesday night? Wednesday night was a really sweet uh, uh, evening, a, a really sweet service. Now, it, it, there was nothing that stood out about it from other Wednesday nights. As all Wednesday nights are, we started off by having prayer. I thank God that our church still has prayer on Wednesday nights, that we still can send up our petitions to God on Wednesday nights. I, I'm, I'm proud to say that our church has continued that. But uh, Wednesday night, Will had Sister Donna Terry come forward and sing. And she sung two songs. Now, Donna Terry has a special place in my life. Because her and Doyle invested in my life, invested in my ministry. There was a time when Donna Terry would call me and she wouldn't so much ask if I would be willing to go somewhere. She would say, Kevin, you're going to be in New Smyrna on Sunday morning. Or she would say, Kevin, you're going to be in Dade City on Sunday night. 
And I would just say, yes, ma'am. But you know what? Because of that, it bolstered some, uh, a little bit of uh, confidence on stage. I, uh, not, that, that, not that they were training me to put on some sort of show, but, but this stage is a tough place to be. And, and they invested in me to where I could learn a little stage presence, and I'm thankful for that. But as Donna uh, finished her songs, or as she began to sing, I'm sorry, she said that she was getting older and that she was forgetting some of her lines and that uh, the, the songs didn't come so easily to her anymore. And then when Will was done, uh, or I'm sorry, when Sister Donna was done singing, Will asked for Brother Roger to come and sing two songs. Now I, like most of you, anything Brother Roger does brings a tear to my eye. He just has a special place in my heart, the humility, the things I've seen Brother Roger do. I, I put him on a pedestal. He's a hero of mine. And it's no secret that Raj has battled some health issues. And with age comes certain things for all of us. Even I don't have the voice that I once did. But I was thinking as Brother Roger uh, was singing those songs, you know, I don't hear that his voice is not quite what it used to be. I'll tell you what I hear. I can remember when I was a boy, even when I wasn't living for God, I remember certain things that Brother Roger would do. When Brother Roger would come behind this pulpit and he would start to preach, my ears would perk up. I, I really wanted to pay attention. And I, I, don't, I don't see Raj up here with his voice not quite the way it used to be. I'll tell you what I see. I see a man who would say things like, Purge me with hyssop and I'll be clean. Wash me and I'll be white than snow. I see a man who would tell stories and say things like, tell them John 3.16 sent you. I hear that boldness still. I, I hear a man who would say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you as chicks, but you would not. I, I remember Raj saying those things. I remember the power in his voice. I remember when Donna Terry could raise the roof off this place. In fact, I was thinking of the song that Tammy sung tonight. Donna has sung that song so many times here. I, I, I've heard often uh, recently Brother Ronald say things uh, when he gets to sing, say things like, we're going to go to Ohio or West Virginia. And he makes this statement. He says, it's not as easy as we get older to go anymore. And that's, that's, that's uh, within reason, that things wouldn't be quite as easy the older you get. But you know what? Ron still sings as good today as most people ever dreamed of singing. Uh, I, I think of Ronald singing, my name is written there. I've never heard anyone sing it quite like Ronald sings it. I couldn't help but be reminded of a story that Brother Roger used to tell. He used to tell about an, the African lion, the leader of the African lion. And he would say as they get older, their teeth would not be quite as sharp. Or maybe their claws would not be quite as long. Or, or maybe they didn't have quite the muscle mass that the younger lions behind them had. But Roger would point out that for the African lion, it never lost its roar. And when those people are up here, the saints of God before us, doing their thing for God, guess what I hear? I hear the roar. The ground still shakes when the saints of God's roar. And I appreciate that. So tonight I want to ask this question. Is there somebody who's going to pick up the mantle? Because with all due respect, with all due respect, and God knows my heart, I would never offend anyone. And I'm not rushing anything. I hope that we can worship with the same saints and the same leaders for the next 20 years, if God be willing. But it's reasonable and we would be naive to think that this is going to go on forever. It's not going to go on forever. And I don't want to stand back and say, oh, so-and-so was the best at this job. Or so and when we had this guy or that girl, we could get this job done. Somebody better come along and pick up the mantle and stand in the gap for those people who've done it for us. So tonight I want to preach on why pick up the mantle. The first reason that Elisha might have picked up the mantle, I thought, was because it was a familiar mantle to him. I want you to turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 19, just a short ways back. 1 Kings chapter 19 in verses 1, or I'm sorry, in verses 19, we kind of see Elisha come onto the scene. It says, so he departed, talking about Elijah, thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will go and follow thee. So this was a familiar mantle. Elisha had seen this mantle before when it had been cast upon him. Now my wife pointed out as she was typing up this message for me that I should point out what a mantle is because she, she was afraid that some others like her thought what might think that someone was carrying around a six-foot post that you put above your fireplace. But that's not the mantle we're talking about. In biblical times, some of the prophets of God would wear a mantle that was sort of like a cloak or a cape. It was uh, to ward off the cold, and in some cases it was to set them apart from the other people when you would see someone with a mantle like that. So Elisha knew this mantle. It had been cast upon him before. Also, Elisha had followed Elijah for several years. He had seen Elijah in the hills and the valleys. He had seen him doing his miracles and in the hard times wearing that mantle. 
So the mantle certainly was familiar to Elisha. Elisha always, also just a few verses before where we started tonight, Elijah had gone down to the river Jordan and he had taken off his mantle and he had smote the river Jordan and those waters, the mighty rushing Jordan, parted, it separated and they walked across on dry land. So Elisha knew that mantle. He was familiar with that mantle. I thank God I'm familiar with some mantles right here in this church. It is not foreign to me that God's Spirit dwells here on a weekly basis. Every single service. It's very familiar to me when one of our saints of God gets uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and the Holy Spirit takes over and anointing falls and people hit these altars. That's not foreign to me. It's familiar to me. And I thank God my girls get to see the same familiarity that I get to see. Like Brother Roger getting up here and singing. I want my girls to see that old time conviction that old time worship. So it was a familiar mantle. Secondly, tonight, it was an anointed mantle. Elisha may have thought, now what reason, what other reason do I have to pick up this mantle? So he thought back to some of the miracles that God had done through Elijah and how the anointing from God rested on his mentor's shoulders. Miracles such as this, such as Elijah praying that the rain would cease for three and a half years. Elijah praying that the rain would start again. Elijah praying over the barrel of meal that it would not waste and the cruise of oil that it would not fail. Elijah praying that the, the son of the widow would be resurrected. Those miracles. Calling fire from heaven to consume the altar. The prophecy that uh, Elijah had that Ahab's sons would all be destroyed. The prophecy that, that uh, Elijah had that Jezebel would be eaten by dogs. The prophecy that Ahaziah would die from his illness. The calling down of fire to consume both the first and the second 50 soldiers that came along. The parting of the Jordan River that we just talked about. And lastly, being caught up to heaven in, in a chariot of fire. Those were miracles of anointing that Elisha saw on that mantle. There was no question for Elisha that that mantle that Elijah wore was certainly an anointed mantle. Uh, Elijah's was an anointed mantle, a vessel through which God could pour himself out onto others. Now we have some anointed mantles right here in this church. I couldn't help but think if I was going through a hard time, if I was going through uh, some times where I needed serious prayer, I thank God there's some people anointed enough in this church and within our church community, I could call on them and have good faith that they would pray for me and that God would move on my behalf. I thank God for the anointing of the saints. I thought about the, the friends I have who have an anointing. I love Brother Will and Brother Sean. I can call them friends. Brother Hoy and Brother Chris Rumfelt, preacher buddies who are anointed. I thank God for my anointed friends. Friends that I can call likewise brothers that are part of my team. So Elijah wore a faithful mantle. Elisha was able to see that not only was this a familiar mantle that he should pick up, it was a faithful mantle that he should pick up. I'm sorry, an anointed mantle. And thirdly tonight, it was a faithful mantle that Elijah wore. Now, Elisha knew some good times with Elijah, but he certainly knew of some hard times that Elijah had experienced. Elijah was just a man, you have to remember. I don't want to paint Elijah as some sort of deity. He certainly was not. I couldn't help but think a few weeks ago we celebrated uh, Patty and Ronald's contributions to the church for 50 years. And they were well deserving of that celebration. We would all agree on that, correct? Well deserving of that. But Ronald, as he always did with such class on Sunday night explained, and I, and I appreciate his way of doing this, he explained that to put our faith in man is futile. We really shouldn't cast our praises off on man. We, we shouldn't put the full weight of our trust in man because man is subject to fail. We're going to fail. So I'm not trying to put uh, Elijah in some category of deity. He was just a man with failures and discouragements and different things like that. Elijah did not have a monopoly on smooth sailing through the Christian life. But Elisha could remember that come what may through the lean times, through the times of plenty and in the times when even Elijah was discouraged to the point he wanted to die. There was a point where he actually wanted to die. But also in the times that he had enough boldness to call down fire from heaven, uh, he was faithful. Elisha was able to see this man was faithful. Now I'm thankful for the men and women in our church who despite the hard times, despite the bad news from the doctor and in some cases, in many cases, the tragedies in their life have remained faithful. They've remained back, bone straight, and pressed forward toward the mark. Something to look to. There's a reason that some of you my age and younger and older, take 15 years above me and 15 years below me. I'm 39 years old. There's a reason some of us ought to look to that mantle and be willing to pick it up. See, faithfulness for the Christian is not displayed only in those who live a life without conflict or without failure. It's not displayed in the man or woman who never seemed to experience the valley. Faithfulness is displayed in the man or woman who gets knocked down from time to time and has shortcomings, 
despite their best efforts, but in spite of the valleys, and in spite of the heartaches, and in spite of the struggles, they refuse to quit. They refuse to abandon their Savior. I, uh, there's a poem, I don't have it with me, I, I wish I did, that was read during a, a sermon that my dad and Ronald listened to about the Pony Express, a gentleman. But he, he, he reads a poem called The Race. And it basically says this in a nutshell. Faithfulness is nothing more than this, than to rise each time you fall. We're going to fall from time to time. It's just to rise each time we fall, to have that grit. So for the saints in this church, for the saints in our free will community who wonder if they can still make an impact for God, they wonder if the generation following them even notices the work they do for Christ. I say this, press forward toward the mark. Fight the good fight. Finish the race, as Paul said. Some of us are taking notice. Some of us are willing and excited to pick up the mantle. So he had a, it was a familiar mantle. It was certainly an anointed mantle. It was a faithful mantle. Fourthly tonight, and this is the one that caught me, or I spent the most time on because I really enjoyed studying on it. Uh, fourthly tonight, it was an unhalting mantle. Now you might say, now what does that mean, an unhalting mantle? That doesn't, that doesn't sound like anything that has any importance to it. But you'll recall that Elijah was standing on top of Mount Carmel. And he was having a little showdown with those Israelites who had cast their lots with the false god Baal. And Elijah says this. Now listen to what he says. This really pricked my mind and I went back and studied on this. He says, how how long halt ye between two opinions? Now to understand what Elijah's asking here, we got to look at the, the definition of the word halt. The word halt means to limp or to stop with lameness, to hesitate. Now this is the one that really caught me. It's a picture of a military troop that stops their marching that stands in doubt of whether or not to proceed or what they should do. Now let me say this. Right now is not the time to halt. As Christians, we're having a little showdown of our own on top of Mount Carmel with the world, with the media, with those who seek to destroy every fabric of our faith. We're having a little showdown of our own. Now it's not time to retreat. It's not time to waver in our convictions. As Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, girls, Callie, Corinne, Kate, and Stephanie, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Thank God. Uh, I couldn't help but think of another story that Brother Roger told. That was one of the great things about Brother Rogers. He's got so many awesome stories, and I certainly can't tell them like he did. But thinking about how this is not a time to retreat, I thought about a story he used to tell about George Washington, and I don't know it word for word. But this is basically what he said. George Washington was leading his troops across the bridge. And when they got across the bridge, one of the officers said to him, Sir, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, George Washington says, Now burn the bridge. And one of the officers looks up and says, Sir, do you really want us to burn the bridge? Because see, if we burn the bridge and then we choose to retreat, we'll have nowhere to retreat to. And George Washington said this, retreat, retreat nothing. It'll be victory or it'll be death. As simple as that. It's sort of like us saying, I do want to get saved. I want to give my life to the Lord. And as I walk this Christian life, this Christian road, I think I'll leave the worldly bridges behind me in case I want to retreat. But I say like George Washington, I don't want to retreat. It's either a life with Christ and a life serving Him or no life at all. There is no retreat. Lastly tonight, I want to talk about it being an available mantle. It was an available mantle. Now, Elisha could pick up the mantle because he was close enough to see it fall to the ground. Now, look with me in 2 Kings chapter 2 again. We're going to read the same verses, and I want you to listen to what he says here. It says, And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder. And Elijah went up with a whirlwind into uh, heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in the two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the river Jordan. Now you might say, now I understand the verses. You've already read them tonight. And it just so happens that Elisha was in the right place at the right time to pick up that mantle. But that's not actually the case. Elisha had every opportunity to to depart Elijah. If you'll recall, and I'm not going to go into detail here. Let's go back to... uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent thee to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him the same thing we ought to say. As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. 
And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head? In other words, hey, do you know that you're following a guy that's fixing to die? And, and Elisha basically says a little smart alecky, I know he's going to die. Hold your peace. Don't worry with that. And it goes on in verses 4 through 10 to repeat that same thing. Elijah has to go from town to town on these little trips. And in each town he tells Elisha, would you please just stay behind? And each time Elisha says the same thing. No, sir, I've gone with you this far and I'm not quitting now. As the Lord liveth, I'm going forward. And so the last time they go, he says, now look, Elisha, I have to go down to the River Jordan. And I'm really asking you just to stay here. And you know what Elisha said, I'm not staying here. And the 50 sons of the prophet come out to him and they say, hey, your master's going to die today. And in essence, they're saying, these were good men, don't get me wrong. They were people who were learning to be prophets. Uh, they were men of ministry. But they were saying to him, look, you're following a guy whose days are numbered. You're going to go down to that Jordan and all that and take that, 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 that trip down into the valley there. You don't need to do that because he's not even going to live. And Elisha says, no, I'm going with him all the way to the river. So he goes to the river, Jordan, and Elijah takes his, his uh, cloak, as we talked about, and he smites the water and the waters part. And the Bible says something funny about those 50 prophets, those 50 sons of the prophet. It says they viewed all this from afar off. And I just picture them having to squint to see what's really going on down by the river. They can't quite see what's going on. And when they get down there, Elijah smites the water and they walk across on dry ground. And as they're walking across, Elijah, or Elijah says to him, what would you have me do for you? And Elisha does one of the quotes or asks one of the most famous questions in the Bible. Could I have a double portion of your spirit? That's a good thing to ask for, by the way. I'd like to have a double portion of some of the spirits that are in this church, that's for sure. And so Elijah goes on to tell him that's a hard thing to ask, but he grants it to him. And then he's called up in this chariot of fire. And again, that mantle falls to the ground. And I thought, you know, Elisha did something that those other boys didn't. He went far enough that, that that mantle was actually available. Those other guys didn't have to view that from afar off. They could have went down to the River Jordan with the man of God. One of them might have gotten that mantle. Now we know that's not the case because God had anointed Elisha for sure. But they viewed it from afar off. And you know what? They were not bad guys. Some of us are not bad people. Some of us are just doing our best to raise our families, to attend church faithfully, to do what we can. But if we're not careful, we'll be content viewing things from afar off. We'll be content to say, hey, remember the good old days when so-and-so was here, when so-and-so was here? Instead of saying, hey, the good old days, they can be right now. I'll take my place with the saints. I'll do my job so that the church can go forward. And this is what I thought of lastly, and again, I mean this with all due respect. This is the truth, and I'm not singling anyone out. There's so many saints of God. I thought of Sister Sonny and how I've watched her work through the years for people less fortunate and homeless. I thought about Brother Hamilton being the first one since I was a little boy to walk down here on Wednesday nights and give his petitions and say things like, Have I told you guys I love you lately? I just thought about the sweet spirit we have in this church. But the truth is, unless we're naive, this is the truth. The waters of the Jordan are going to start separating. They're going to start opening up for dry ground. And guess what? I want to be close enough to experience that dry ground. I want to be close enough alongside God's saints. I want to glean enough wisdom from them, listen enough to them that God might choose me to pick up that mantle. I sure love to be counted worthy enough to pick up that mantle. i tell you what I thought about. There's a few of my buddies who are certainly wading off in the river, maybe before it's even separated. Hoy and Will lead this church, and they do a wonderful job. And they're wanting to walk on that dry ground. And in some cases, I think they're experiencing some of that dry ground. And I'll tell you who came to my mind more than anyone, and I don't want to embarrass anyone. Ron Ron Duncan has done so much lately to prove that he wants to experience this dry ground, brother. I appreciate my buddies that want to experience the dry ground going through the Jordan. Willing to go the, the extra mile, not view it from afar off. Somebody's got to pick up the mantle. And it, there better be some of us that's willing to do it. Ladies and men. And I thank God, you know what? There are a lot of us that want to do it. There are a lot of us who are bolstering or getting bolstered the faith that we need and the courage we need to carry on the work that's been done for so many years. I couldn't help but think of the times that Ronald or different ones will tell of the men who worked on this church. Brother Carl Spencer and different ones. My dad, my grandfather that worked with their own hands to build this church. But you know what? It, this church wouldn't be built if they would have just said, hey, it'd be nice if we had a church, guys. No, you got to pick up a hammer. And go to work. That's the way things get done. So I want to be part of that crowd. 
that's willing to go down in the valley to the rushing waters of Jordan and have enough faith to walk over on dry ground. How many will say with me tonight, as the Lord liveth, I'll not depart from the faith. I'll support the anointed. I'll encourage the faithful. And this most of all, I'll no longer halt between two opinions. If the God of Israel be God, let him be God. If, the, if, if Baal's God, let him be God. But if the God of Israel is God, let him be God. And guess what? The God of Israel is the one that sent the fire and consumed the altars. The one that proved himself on Mount Carmel. So let's no longer be halted between two opinions. Let's bow our heads and pray tonight. I thank you again, God, for the opportunity to preach, God, your word, for the freedom I have in this church. And God, you know my heart. Nobody respects the saints of this church more than I do, God. I love them. I appreciate them. I want to follow them, God. I want that dry ground experience. Now, I just ask, God, that if there's someone here who doesn't know you as Savior, Lord, someone who hasn't even been given the opportunity to do a work for you because they haven't asked you, Lord, to come into their lives and make you king of their lives, God, would you prick their hearts tonight, God? Would you give them the courage to come to this altar, Lord, where someone will pray with them and explain to them how they can get in on this great team, God, that's trying to do a work for you and build this church? I thank you for the saints, God, who've been faithful so many years, God. As as was said this morning, let us not take for granted, God, what's been done in this church or that it's going to continue, Lord, because as we know, time has a way of defeating everything, God. So help us, God, to do our part to pick up the reins, Lord, to pick up the mantle. So, God, I'm just asking, Lord, for you to bless this altar service and we'll do and say everything, God, in your sweet name. Amen. Amen.
When everyone around said that I would fall You were my friend And you believed in me Through the good times And through the bad At times I felt that you And at times I get so scared I can't speak a 
single word But His goodness and mercy follow I will ever live with Him. The Lord is my shepherd. I am so glad that I'm His lamb. He takes care of me in a world that's filled with grief. I will ever live with In 
my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I know I've had some hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Cause through it all, to be. Amen. Stand with us and we'll be dismissed. Hope you have a great week. Got a couple announcements. Let's give Brother Kevin another.